last week I interviewed James Lindsay, Dr. James Lindsay, and we talked about the academic underpinnings of wokeness. Where did this come from? How is it that it infected seemingly our entire society, right, all the way through, through our news institutions, through corporate America, literally through the military? How did all of these ideas just be, suddenly permeate our entire culture here in the West? Did it all come just from these rogue academics at some fringe conferences back in the 1980s? I mean, in all seriousness, right? If you're, you're, you're not Dr. James Lindsay, maybe James is listening to this. So James, you're listening, this doesn't apply to you, but to everybody else, have you actually tried to sit and read a critical race theory academic paper? It is gobbledygook. It is completely insane. It is ridiculous. Nobody is sitting and reading these things and saying, ah, yes, this is what I'm going to base my entire life around. No. And so I've always said that there's something that's missing a little bit from the story about where critical race theory came, how it became to have so much influence in our society, uh, where did wokeness come from, how did that and so did the social justice movement become so incredibly large, so incredibly fast. And then I got a phone call from somebody who's a human events writer, and they told me something. They said, Poso, do you remember the TV show called Glee back in the mid 2010s? I'm like, Glee? Yeah, I remember Glee. You guys remember Glee, right? I am going to create an environment that is so toxic. So it was the show that was out there and it was this sort of proto woke kind of thing. And a lot of this stuff actually stems, it turns out from Glee. But what people don't realize is that show at one point had over 30 million viewers. Many of them, by the way, were in high school. Many of them were teenagers. They were in their prepubescent years in some cases. They were the younger millennials who were watching this stuff. And this was one of the first times that they ever came into contact with identity politics. Well, this contributor, Bill Harrell, he found a Tumblr post where one of the main fans, the leaders of this, you know, it's called the fandom, the online fandom on Tumblr, who is now a Hollywood consultant, of course, admitted that this is actually where one of the biggest starts of the influence of wokeness came from in the 2010s. And look what she wrote. We fought its wars until it was too late, until it was nothing but a distorted parody of reality, a cracked mirror. You asked for history, there's no history. It's only a gray face telling you to destroy yourself. It's not history, it's blood. Listen to this. You have no idea where the suffering came from. You don't know where the discourse started. Where do you think the word problematic came from? Where do you think the representational anger came from? It came from Glee, and it came from the toxic fandom surrounding Glee. So go to humanevents.com, check out this, this article. And so I was tweeting about this, and I saw some people were a little hesitant. They were like, really, Glee is where all this started from? I say 100%. I think that that hit at a time, keep in mind, this is pre-Netflix when this show comes out, massive, massive reach, reach, massive, massive influence, probably one of the last big broadcast network TV shows prior to really the advent of streaming. And it also hits at a time that social media is becoming ubiquitous. So you get social media, you get wokeness or proto-wokeness of glee, and you get this massive amount of push behind it from, of course, the Fox TV network. Ladies and gentlemen, here's my que other question to test the theory. If you had any friends who were super friends of Glee, super fans of Glee, are they still friends with you now? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the This is Charlie Kirk, founder and CEO of Turning Point USA. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Turning Point USA.